All right, guys, so tonight we are on an after hours, no AC call in a, a very, very hot kitchen at a very, very busy restaurant. So, my initial inspection, I found the thermostat display was dead. Um, I haven't got any further than that. Thermostat display is dead, disconnect is on. Our breaker downstairs is not tripped. So, first thing I'm gonna do is pull that panel open and start taking some voltage readings, all right? I got my front panel off. And if you'll notice, I haven't shut my disconnect off just yet. Um, now that's important because I don't want to disturb anything at this point because I don't know what's going on yet. If there was any fault codes flashing or something, they would be lost. If I just turn that off, start pulling panels apart, and then I'd flip it back on, I run the risk of losing any sort of fault code, possibly resetting something. Um, looks like I think I have already seen our issue, of course. Right there, our little popper is tripped, so... It looks like we're having some sort of low voltage issue, guys. So we'll have to delve into this a little bit more and see what's going on here, because that's that's a coincidence. I just had another one earlier today that it was a, a low voltage short. So, all right, guys, let me put this camera down and uh, see if I can see anything. Get my meter out, and I'll bring you along in just a minute. I reset our little popper. Uh, before I did so, I did visually inspect everything. I didn't see anything obvious. No low voltage wiring touching uh, the chassis at all. Um, the only thing I did notice was one of our contactors, that wire right there, kind of looks like it got warm a bit, so I'll have to uh, address that in just a little bit. But I still don't have any cooling. I haven't verified if I have a signal for cooling yet, so kind of waiting to see if anything happens here. Here's what we got going on, guys. So I got tired of waiting for my thermostat to initiate a call for cool because the area where the thermostat is, I guess, is a little, a little too cool. So anyway, I installed the jumper from my red to my Y1, and immediately when I did that, the fuse on that control board popped. And then I went over and I, after I found that, I went over and I noticed that somebody had replaced it with a 10 amp fuse. It's supposed to be a 5 amp fuse. Um, now that's probably no real big deal, but of course when I go to replace that, I'm going to put the proper size fuse in there. So I have my little 5 amp popper on here, just hooked right up to the, uh, the board there, just for testing purposes. So I'm going to power it back on. We should immediately go into cool mode, or our popper will pop if we still have a short. All right, well, it looks like we still have a short somewhere. So, we are gonna have to look a little bit harder for this one. I think I'm gonna disconnect my jumper first. Reset my popper, Let's see what happens. All right, my indoor blower came on. I got 26 volts on my red. I don't have a call for cool yet. But I'm guessing somewhere that is our issue because whenever I do jumper that thermostat and initiate a call for cool, my little fuse over there trips. And to be honest, I don't know if when I jumpered that, if that's when the fuse blew, or if it was like that already, I just maybe coincidentally thought that I caused the problem, but I'm starting to believe since the system was already dead and my thermostat was dead downstairs that um, it was probably like that when I got here. So 
All right, well, let me put this camera down and start doing some digging, and I'll uh, bring you along as soon as I can. All right, guys? What I've done so far is I removed the yellow wire for my stage two cooling, and I bypassed the thermostat in stage one. And I did that without having any sort of issue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump her now to the stage two wire and see what kind of results we get. Chances are our little popper will pop. And if that's the case, then I'm somewhat certain our issue is in our stage two cooling. get the results I was expecting out of that test. Um, I'm in stage two cooling right now. My little popper over there didn't pop. Uh, the popper over here is fine. So whatever we have going on, it, uh, I'll bet you we have a maybe a slight little rub out that's just kind of barely touching something. All right, well, let me get in there a little bit closer and see if I can inspect some of this wiring. Well, it took a little bit of digging, but after that last failed attempt of getting my little popper to pop, after the first time it popped, um, I got to looking around and just right over here, I just happened to notice a little burn spot right there. And then I flip this wire around, and right there you'll see where it has, my camera will focus on that. It is basically rubbed through, and that's where it was shortened out at. See, now with something like this where it's, it's held in a certain position, but it was probably bouncing around from the vibration of the condensing fan motors, um, you know, whatever other vibrations this thing, when the indoor, indoor blower motor would come out, it would probably shift a little bit. So... The first time it was probably, my first initial test, it was probably laying right on that pipe. And then maybe during my second test, some of the vibration knocked it loose. And then that's why my popper didn't pop. But uh, yeah, the low voltage shorts, you gotta, you gotta kind of be really aware of little stuff like that. Cause it just takes the littlest, tiniest rub out on the littlest, tiniest wire in the the, I don't know, the most uh, obscene place to create this sort of problem. So I'm going to go ahead, cut and splice that wire, and then we're going to go through and basically recommission the system. I'm going to go downstairs, adjust my thermostat, replace that fuse. Well, no, no, I take that back. Um, I'm going to splice that wire, adjust my thermostat, make sure everything functions operate or functions fine, and then when I know I have no more issues, I'll replace that fuse because I don't want to leave a pile of five amp fuses up here that are all burned out so alrighty let me get that taken care of and I'll bring you along when we're done here's your tip of the day guys if you can see in there what I've done is I've taken one zip tie and put it around this metal loop that's on the compressor and then I've taken another zip tie threaded it through that first zip tie to hold my wires basically to that second zip tie so this way my wires are not directly in contact with this piece of metal on the compressor. Because even if they're zipped down to that piece of metal, there will be a little bit of vibration and you still run the risk of eventually them rubbing out and shorting out as it did on this copper pipe over here. So um, that's not my original idea. I believe I got that from one of Chris Stevens' videos from uh, HVACR videos. So if you're not subscribed to him, what is wrong with you? You need to go over there and subscribe right now. Some of the best stuff on the web, all right? So, that's your tip of the day, guys. I'm gonna get back to uh, getting everything set up so we can turn this thing on and take some supply temps. Looks like we got kinda lucky tonight, guys. That was our only issue that I found. I just went downstairs, turned my thermostat down to 72, 
our, our temperature in the uh, office area stock room was about 74. Uh, compressor amps are 10. Right over here, I was pulling about 9.8, not 10.8, sorry. Our indoor blower, we're pulling four. I haven't replaced that fuse yet. I'm gonna power it down as soon as I get as soon as I get supply temps recorded. Let's go over here and see what our supply temps are at. That's pretty good for a 21-year-old unit. 52 with a 78 degree return. So yeah, this unit's kicking butt. But uh, all right guys, that does it for tonight. Hope you enjoy, like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.